Drinking buddies, I'm doing a little riff on my shelf versus allocated versus unicorn series with this home age prudent pappy, putting it up against an allocated bottle and a couple unicorns. Let's see how it goes. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies. So if you're not familiar with prudent pappy, you take two parts maker's cask strength to one part larceny 92 proof small batch. Uh, then you put it in a bottle, let them let those flavors mingle for a little bit, and uh, then you have Prudent Pappy, and it's pretty delicious. Usually ends up around 103 proof, 104 proof, somewhere in there. Since those makers bottles can differ from batch to batch, uh, they tend to be, you know, they're proof ranges, it's cask strength. Uh, but mine, I like to do a uh, barrel aging spiral inside. So um, this one has a barrel aging spiral in it. That's the Prudent Pappy. Next up, we have this allocated bottle that I find to be highly overrated. That's what the theme is here overrated. Uh, I love the Prudent Pappy and it's something you can throw together with two shelf bottles. Sweet Wheat is really hard to find and not very good. Old Fitzgerald is impossible unicorn level to find and this 11 year I find to not be that good. I've had the older bottles that I liked a lot. And then this Weller Single Barrel, they, they can really vary wildly from batch to batch. And this one is 97 proof and I think it's just okay. I much prefer CYPB or Weller 12 or Weller 107 or anything. Basically, I prefer the entire Weller line to, to Weller Single Barrel, except for regular Special Reserve, um, which is a perfectly fine bottle. If it was a shelf bottle, I think it'd be a great bottle. But the fact that it's uh, very difficult to find drops it a peg for me. But you guys know I'm a Weller fanboy and I don't love this. I've been accused of being a Heaven Hill hater, which might be a little bit of a truth. I, I you know, for my flavor profile, if I want to go for that nutty, caramel, peanutty quality, I'd rather probably have a Knob Creek than most of Heaven Hill, personally. Um, and this Old Fitzgerald, eh, this 11 year, I found to be super disappointing. So let's see if this, you know, bottle that you can throw together at home, this home blend, can beat an allocated and two unicorns. Let's go. Ooh, this smells good. I mean, these two are good bourbons, don't get me wrong. They're good, they're just, they're nowhere near worth the hype. This is a little, this is interesting. This is a little herbal on the nose. This is giving me rye vibes. This is a little wild. <sighs> but it goes right into like the caramels and vanillas that you get off of just a regular bourbon. Little youthy, little youthy on here. Oh, huh. That one's a little, it's got kind of a little bit of a, uh, like a chemical-y thing on it. Not a lot of flavor going on, just kind of like ethanol and some young grains. Uh, it's kind of a corn forward and that, that's not great. I think that might be the sweet wheat. Yeah, that's a, that's a brighter, better nose. This is brighter and like zesty, like orange zest. A little bit of honey. A little oak. A little bit of a something fruity. I don't want, I don't want to say it's cherry. It's more like, man, what is that? It's like a cantaloupe thing. Huh. Oak, peanuts, caramel, brown sugar. That's, I believe, to be the old fits. It's light years ahead of class one, but I would still, whatever's in this class, it, it's just, it's good, but not mind blowing. Maybe we save the two best for last because that's two duds so far. I mean, in comparison. Like, I'm, they, they're not terrible bourbons, they're just, well, actually, I would call whatever's in this glass, actually, I would say that borders on terrible. Oh, this is a little black peppery. Yeah, they have, like, black pepper a lot on here. Something I usually only get off of turkey. That black pepper thing carries forward into the flavor. That's uh, very interesting. 
black pepper, a little bit of cherry on this guy. Uh, bourbon vanilla is coming through a lot. A little bit of a like a sweet uh, honey thing on here too. More honey than like a brown sugar or a caramel on this one. Oh wow, okay. This is like a dank nose. <sighs> yeah, this is like... <sighs> this is like old books, wet wood. A little bit of a cherry thing on this guy, too. Yeah, just going off nose, I would guess this is the oldest one, but I don't believe this is the Old Fitz because it smells nothing like Old Fitz. Oh, yeah. That's got a really nice oak note to it that's not over-oaked. Um, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a great cherry thing here, bourbon vanilla. The creme brulee, um, burnt sugar. That's really good. That's by far the best up here. Which I hope that means that it's the prudent puppy because that would prove this experiment pretty. That would prove this experiment to be pretty good. Um, all right, I'm back. I, I drank these two down a little bit because I wanted to make sure. But, but the more I drank on them, the more I realized this is pretty good. But whatever's in this glass is straight up terrible. Uh, no offense to the people who made it. I'm sure they're 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 great at making other products, but uh, this is just, it's borderline a drain pour for me. Um, it's its ethanol-y, and I don't even think it's a very high proof. It just doesn't have much going on. It's, it's not a great pour. Don't like it. Sorry, I'm going on too much about how I don't like it. Uh, I just feel bad, because I really, really don't like whatever this is. I think it's the 1792 Sweet Wheat, which it is, yep. Which means this is probably the Weller. Yeah, that's the Weller. Um, the two best ones up here, it should make I mean, for my palate, this is going to be the old fits. Yeah, so uh, this one, it just, that peanut flavor gave it away for me. And then last up is going to be the Prudent Pappy, which the, 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 the winner was the home blend. So if you want to do this at home, like I said, two parts Maker's Cast Strength, one part Larceny Small Batch, you end up with a proof around 103, 104 proof. I threw a barrel aging spiral in there to get a little bit more flavor out of it. And I think that's why it's got that really awesome dank nose. Smells very old. It tastes like it's got some good age on it. Um, I know I'm tricking the bottle into tasting that way. Rapid aging can be a little polarizing. Some people don't love the way it ends up, but on this one, it's working. Cheers, drinking buddies. We'll see you on the next one.